we were underage. We were little girls. I was 16. I was 16. I started going to him when I was like 14, 15. 14 turning 15. If you think at 14, $200, that's a lot of money at 14 years old. I mean, that's a lot of money now. She's like, oh, you know, do you need to make any extra money? I'm like, yeah. She's like, okay, I can give you know, like $200. There's this older guy in Palm Beach. He gets a lot of massages from girls. You know, that was really that They were recruited by someone who was adept at finding girls that would be willing to you know, go to a house for a few hundred dollars. And as it started out, you know, give a man a back rub, but many cases it turned into something uh, far worse than that, uh, elevated to a crime and a serious crime, in some cases sexual batteries. My life would have been different if I would have never went to Jeffrey Epstein's house. It was just a dark turning point in my life. On June 30th, 2008, Jeffrey Epstein, a Palm Beach multimillionaire hedge fund manager, received what might have been the most lenient plea deal for a serial sex offender in U.S. history. The Miami Herald identified over 60 of his victims, just young middle and high school girls at the time of the abuse. More than a decade later, several of them are talking for the first time about how they were molested by Epstein and believe they were betrayed by the very prosecutors who were supposed to hold Epstein accountable. They came from fairly disadvantaged backgrounds. There was some dysfunction in their families. The lure of a lot of money was more than they were able to resist. I went from um, an abusive situation to being a runaway to living in foster homes to just already being hardened by life on the streets. The other girls that I personally know of that went, were coming from trailer parks, that were having gun shootings, drugs. My mother was on drugs at the time and she couldn't provide for me and I was pretty much homeless. One child would be lured over would be paid substantial sums of money, would be offered the further inducement of being paid a bounty for anybody else that she was able to bring to Epstein. A network developed where many young girls in the same kinds of circumstance wound up being victimized. The three of us slid into the back seat of the cab and we drove and I remember just driving down Okeechobee Boulevard and thinking how I had never been on Palm Beach Island before in my whole entire life that I had lived in West Palm Beach. By the time I was 16, I brought in up to 75 girls, all the ages of you know, 14, 15, 16, people going from eighth grade to ninth grade at just um, school parties is where I would recruit them from. All Jeffrey cared about was go find me more girls. His appetite was insatiable. He, he couldn't stop. He wanted new, fresh, young faces every single day. The sheer volume of girls, uh, the frequency, sometimes several or many in the same day, the age of the girls. In some cases, there were victims that didn't know each other, had never met each other, but they had a, basically the same story. I remember there was a staircase, and it was like, kind of like a spiral almost. And she brings us up the stairs and it was like spiral stairs. You walked into his bedroom, around his bed, to almost a, like a very little hall and then it was another door. And that's where everything would happen, was in his bathroom. He would have a dresser and it was filled with like, the first drawer was lotion and then like the third drawer down was like sex toys. So you, we would take the massage table out and set it up in the middle of the room. And then he came in with his white towel on around him. And then he just laid down in his towel on his stomach and he was just talking to people on the phone. When he flip, flipped over, that's when he said, okay, you can go ahead and take off your shirt and pants, but you can stay in your underwear. He would want us to stand next to him and he would masturbate while he stared at us, touched us to pull his nipples and to play with them in between his fingers and also while I was playing with his nipples he kept doing that stuff to me but he was very aggressive like when he would do it. And then he tried to put his finger in my underwear and I like jumped back and I went I pulled back and I was like whoa <laughs> and he's like no 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 it's okay it's okay I'm sorry I'm sorry I won't do that I won't do that and then he went back to doing that. He's like, just on the outside. And I'm like, oh my God. It ended with 
sexual abuse and intercourse, and then a pat on the back. You've done a really good job. Like, you know, thank you very much, and here's $200. You know, before you know it, I'm being lent out to politicians and to academics and to people that you, royalty, and, and people that you just, you would never think, like, how did you get into that position of power in the first place if you're this disgusting, evil, decrepit person on the inside? Epstein, then in his 50s, was also suspected of organizing sex activities with underage girls at his homes in New York City, New Mexico, and on his private island in the Caribbean. You're talking about hundreds of children all over the world. Victims that were uh, ale alleged sex slaves of Jeffrey Epstein, that they broke over from Eastern Bloc countries. I've seen hundreds and hundreds of girls go through Jeffrey's swinging door, his ever-revolving door. This guy is big time. He knows people that know people that know people. Flight logs from his plane and his address book read like a who's who of some of the richest and most famous and powerful people in the world. Celebrities, actors, philanthropists, academics, and world leaders. It's really disappointing to look, as a lawyer, to look at this circumstance and say, how did this happen? One individual commits one abuse of a minor, in one instance of abuse of a minor, and they're held accountable for years and years through the criminal justice system. This individual abused hundreds of girls, and nothing happened. It's really, really unfortunate. We look at that and we say, how did the criminal justice system fail these girls in such a significant way? How has that happened? There was ample physical evidence and witness testimony to support the girls' stories, including notepads seized from Epstein's home with their names and phone numbers, along with phone records. Despite the corroborating evidence, Palm Beach State Attorney Barry Krischer wanted to charge Epstein only with a misdemeanor. And once that happened, it was clear to me that justice would not be served by the state attorney in the handling of the case, and we referred it to the FBI. And then there were many, many more victims after that time. Epstein hired somebody that would impress the state attorney, Barry Krischer, to drop the investigation. The U.S. Attorney's Office got involved with this case, with Jeffrey Epstein's A list of defense attorneys that are extremely well known and extremely powerful. I think these attorneys were able to manipulate the sitting U.S. attorney and the assistant U.S. attorney working the cases. A few things happened in this case that during my law enforcement career I've never seen before. The U.S. attorneys here had an indictment and they were sending it back and forth to Jeffrey's lawyers for changes. Never seen anything like that before. Well, I started getting somewhat of an inclination that this is a situation where somehow, for some reason, the defendant and the government are working together against the victims. Although that kind of conspiracy theory sounds so preposterous that I didn't want to believe it. A subsequent FBI investigation found a sprawling network of victims and enough evidence to fill a 53-page indictment with federal sex crime charges but Miami U.S. Attorney Alexander Acosta signed off on a secret plea bargain while deliberately not informing Epstein's victims. The deal granted Epstein and his accomplices immunity from federal prosecution. Epstein pleaded guilty in state court to two prostitution charges and served 13 months. Epstein's punishment was like that of no other sex offender in Florida. He had a private space in a vacant wing of the Palm Beach County stockade, but records show he spent limited time there. He was allowed to go to his private West Palm Beach office, where he spent up to 12 hours a day, six days a week, often accepting visitors, including female friends. What he ended up pleading to was a joke. The sentence he served was even a bigger joke. And then his probation was a slap in everybody's face. The government, by that agreement, was definitely putting their name on something that they believed at that moment was ending the prosecution, the possibility of prosecution, and ending the victim's rights. Right there, that's what the government believed. How can you do that to all these, all these girls? How can you tell them that what he did was okay? Acosta, now President Trump's labor secretary, didn't explain why he sealed the details of Epstein's plea so that no one would know the scope of Epstein's crimes or who was involved. Years later, he said he and his staff were bombarded by Epstein's army of legal superstars who launched a year-long assault against him and other prosecutors that they took all the way to the U.S. Attorney General in Washington, D.C. If you don't let the victims be a part of the solution, there is no solution. And in the case of Jeffrey Epstein, 
the prosecutors created a universe that excluded the victims and disempowered them for a second time and empowered the perpetrator. That is absolutely unacceptable. Really, if you think about it too hard, it's scary because this is our government that's supposed to protect us but has done everything to protect, you know, a pedophile. Federal prosecutors claim they achieved a victory by forcing Epstein to register as a sex offender, but there's no agency that regularly monitors his whereabouts. He lists his residence as the U.S. Virgin Islands, but his flight records show that he takes trips around the United States and Europe in his new private plane. This is probably the most unjust outcome of any case that I've been involved in in 40 years. I think it's something that the government just can't ignore anymore. There's so many of us that they just can't forget about it. It's not something that's going to be yesterday's news. Since then, about two dozen civil lawsuits have been filed in connection with the case, including one set to go to trial in December in state court in Palm Beach County that could finally expose more about Epstein's crimes, how many people were involved, and why his case was dismissed by federal prosecutors. Another case filed by Epstein's victims in federal court seeks to invalidate Epstein's plea deal and send him to prison. I am involved in this case in defending the integrity of the justice system, in making sure that we do everything we can to be sure that justice is not bought. He needs to be behind bars. He needs to be behind bars for the rest of his life. There is way too many girls for him not to be. It's just mind-blowing.